Well, you know, I think the story goes back to 2012 auction, the mini auction when uh, nobody had seen much of him. Actually, there were hardly uh, too many franchises bidding for him. It was just, I think, us in Mumbai who were fighting for him a little bit. Uh, we had seen him, you know, through our uh, affinity and our closeness to Trinidad and Tobago, and eventually we have the franchise there. Um, but it's been an incredible story because first and foremost, you know, he's one of those guys who is most unassuming. He has probably been the IPL player of yes since 2012. <laughs> he's done everything you've asked him to do, but, you know, hardly people speak enough about him, you know, to be honest. But he's happy with that because he doesn't, he's a very low profile guy. And I always... Uh, jokingly tell him when I meet him in uh, Trinidad during our Trinbago Knight Rider uh, campaign, he's so animated and he's so conversational and vocal. I said, what happens to you when you come back to Trinidad and the water here? But when you come to IPL, it's like monosyllables, one word, one sentence here and there. He's one of the most unassuming champions that you'll ever come across. Terrific cricketing mind. Knows his game. Knows the game. And, uh, you know, Absolutely, he's a very practical type of a guy. But most important is the relationship that built up between Knight Riders and him. And, uh, you know, he wears, you know, literally when the logo is there on his chest, you know, he he's one of those guys you can honestly say he genuinely means it and he doesn't want to wear any other colors. He, uh, he gets all kinds of offers, but he plays for only our franchise. And uh, he, I think he's also understood that he has become part of the family for us from a very early stage. And when he went through difficult times, you know, we didn't really think that we were going out of the way to do this and do that because, you know, what would you do to a family member? You know, if, if they're part of uh, your family, you know, you, we did what we thought was absolutely the right thing. We didn't think twice. You know, I was jokingly telling somebody that I've probably gone more to testing centers than any other CEO <laughs> with him because of what he has been put through. But to his credit, you know, to come back and uh, sort of, uh, first of all, remodel his action. He is primarily a bowling all-rounder, as he puts it in post-match uh, conversations. And uh, so he is passionate about his bowling. He's uh, probably one of the most skilled guys who has come out. But usually when these types of things happen, people find it very difficult to bounce back from that. You know, when they remodel their action and do those types of things. But he has done it. He's come back. And he's gotten better than he probably was, if that's possible. But then the batting side to him has, uh, has made him, uh, put him in a completely different zone altogether. You know, we, knew, we knew his talent and he had, he had opened for us and he had uh, done different interesting things for us in 2016-17 times. But uh, this is a different level. So, God willing, may this continue. No, I think, you see, even when we brought Chandu on board, the thing that kind of in my conversations with him, what impressed me really was his deep desire to win. It's there. And when you, in whatever you touch and whatever you, wherever you step in, there is that deep desire and commitment to win. And then from there flows the, the thought process around preparation. And that is Chandu. And so he did a lot. Last year was his first season. He was also coming to terms with lots of uh, different things when it comes to IPL, the schedule, how fast the games come, diversity in among players and whatnot. Uh, I think in many ways, Chandu and Gautam are similar because they are, you know, they are type A personalities and, you know, that desire to win. And I think additionally, what Gautam brings is just his track record in IPL and uh, his knowledge and his acumen. And so I think the think tank got significantly stronger. There's no doubt about it. And I think decision making also, you know, this is a very important aspect of it because, you know, you can kind of second guess yourself and then, you know, you have so many players sitting on the bench and you change this and you change that. And, you know, when things are going well, also you try to think, you know, can we do this? And when things are not going well, though, you definitely want to change. I think there's been some consistency in 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 uh, and commitment to the decisions that have been made. And therefore, there's not a lot of uh, changes. In fact, uh, I think I saw a chart the other day which showed uh, for a change that we we are a team that is ranking number one in terms of the least number yes. of changes made to the personnel, which just shows that you put the team together, you back it and basically say we are committed 
go for it. You know, that's that's kind of how, uh, and so both of them combined really, really well. Well, you know, when you start a season, I'm sure every team, uh, the first objective, if you ask them on the flip chart, they'll write is to make the playoffs. You want to be in the top four. And you're always calculating what does it take, what does it take. Gautam is always like, what do you what do you think, what do you think? I said, eight wins will get you in the top four because that's typically how it is. Sometimes with seven wins and run rate, you sneak in in the fourth place. But if you want to be sure, eight wins. And once you get there, then you say, you know, what does it take to be in the top two? Because obviously, it's a huge advantage with uh, two bites at the cherry. Uh, so, I think we are there. Um, although the queue is there for qualification, which is great. Even from a, a top two perspective, I think we are there. One more win will seal it. Uh, so, that's a great place to be. Because that's one of the objectives that you set out. In the first objective and second objective, you can say, okay, we've checked the box. But that doesn't mean anything until you won it, you know. And and all teams are going to come, you know, yeah. hard. There's no doubt about it. Conditions are going to be different, and uh, teams who have done it before, teams who have not done it, you know, who's hungrier. So ultimately, it's going to boil down to, you know, I think a lot of it is going to be about, you know, just the same momentum can carry it forward. You know, God willing, fingers crossed. Fitness wise, the team should be all in in good shape, and then you have to. You have to just play at your best on that given day. You know, nothing is going to come easy. I have not seen a single game, particularly in the postseason, where it's an easy game and, oh, this happened and that happened. None of our games have been easy games. I mean, it's like last minute also something or the other happening here and there. And it's like, I said, why don't you give me a boring game once in a while is what I tell you. It'd be good for the heart. But it's, it's fun. So, very happy to be where we are. But, you know, the old line... Happy but not satisfied because uh, satisfaction will always be and the thrill will be when when you can bring the silver bear home and for our fans and for all concerned. So, God willing, this is the year. So, let's hope for the best. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't sort of speak enough about it, to be honest, because, I mean, I think uh, we should also recognize last year he was out injured. He was not even in the IPL and uh, the guy went through a tough time and we were with him on all of those aspects of what he went through, tried to help him with alternative medicine and whatnot. But eventually he did need surgery, went through that. And the rehab part of it for athletes who have been through that will realize, even and I went through something small for my shoulder recently, you realize it's so tough and it's so boring, but you have to do it. And then the athlete is sitting there and saying, oh my God, I should be there playing and I'm not, and uh, but he handled himself brilliantly. And I think uh, this season, uh, I mean, we've spoken about Chandu and Gautam and whatnot, but I tell you, it's a lot to do with Shreyas. The way he has handled the team, uh, tactically how he has handled it, uh, I'm, I'm sure he would probably want, uh, would have liked to have more runs under his belt, but that's not affected his captaincy in any shape or form. He's come and played some crucial knocks, selfless type of batting, dropping himself lower in the order, depending on match situation and all that. He's been brilliant off the field as well. I think he's got the full backing respect of the players and they love him because of his leadership style, very uncomplicated, transparent and confident. So, and when it comes to decision making, you know, I, I, I'd heard this line from somebody years ago and that typifies him. He says, right or wrong, I'm never in doubt. You know, so that's what you need. You know, decision making is is uh, you're never going to get all the decisions right, but at least you're confident of whatever decision you're taking. And so sometimes you sit down there and you make some changes and you're like, oh, he's bringing this guy on at this point and it works. And you're saying, that's why he's captain and he's that's his instinct. And uh, what do we know? And uh, so he's been brilliant. So we couldn't be happier about uh, Shreya.